Huh? Hey, bro, start the intro. One thousand. What's good? <laughs> it's every three. Huh? See, I'm already messing up. Bro. As y'all can see, though, bro, since we hit a thousand, I, you know, I'm like, you know what? Let me scratch the TV. My OGs, y'all gonna know me. Y'all, y'all can know me. Y'all can, y'all hear, y'all can keep the it's every three TV, but officially, I'm just changing it to AB three just to make it easier for people like. Hopefully in the future, you know what I'm saying? I get kind of kind of big. You feel me? And so if somebody walk up, they ain't gotta be like, what's up, AB3 TV? You feel me? But first and foremost, man, I appreciate each and every one of y'all, bro. I ain't even I ain't even deem this possible. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. Like, I'm definitely humble, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people reach a thousand in like a year or two. It all depends on your dedication or sometimes. You just ha you don't got to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Um, I made sure I ain't start until I was ready, bro. You feel me? I ain't start YouTube until I was 80% at least ready to do this. And you know what I'm saying? It paid off. And I appreciate each and every one of y'all. So I don't know if y'all knew, but I knew I was doing a Larry Bird video for this 1K special. You feel me? We got his most savage moments. Now, some of these might overlap. But it don't matter because this this a whole different man explaining this. This is nonstop sports. First of all, shout out to you for this video. And we finna get straight into the video. Again, I appreciate y'all. Leave a like down below, comment. And you already know we on that road to 2000. You feel me? We monetize now. We on that road to 2000. Man. So subscribe down below, share to a friend, man. We going crazy, especially on Facebook. I got a million views on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? So let's get into this video, bro. I'm not about to waste y'all time, man. Let's get into this. A part of the reason why Larry Bird was called legend was his brilliance as a basketball player. And the other part were his legendary and vicious trash talking skills. Facts. Bird was a killer on the court. He had a foul mouth and he wasn't afraid of anybody. This explosive combination gave birth to some of the most ruthless trash talking stories in NBA history. So here are the 10 best Larry Bird savage moments. We definitely gonna know a lot of these. 1988 there, three point shooting contest. Yep. The three-point shot in the NBA was first introduced in the 1979 NBA season, Larry's rookie year. Seven years later, at the 1986 All-Star Weekend in Dallas. So it started the, the year Larry came into the league. I mean, he was meant to win that joint eventually. Like, that's just, it is what it, that's what I take from that. Ellis, the NBA brought the first official three-point shooting contest to the scene. Larry won it and repeated next year at the All-Star Game in Seattle. In 1988, he was going for a three-peat in Chicago. Before the start of the contest, Bird entered the locker room, did not speak a word to the other competitors, and just Watch took this. a good look at him. He finally said, I'm just looking which one of you is going to come in second. The room huh? was filled with silence because they all knew what kind of a shooter Bird was. <laughs> of course, Larry would go on to win again proving that he's the best shooter in the world. He won without taking off his tracksuit, famously raising his hand while the contest clinching. Hold on, no, 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 let's get that shot real quick, bro. That's so disrespectful, bro. That's savage, that disrespectful. Uh, that's God tier. That's GOAT material. I can barely shoot with a hoodie on. Like I can go, I can go crazy in a hoodie. But this is this man just won a three-point contest, mind you, the, the a defending three-point contest. He won the two years before that with just his jacket on. Bruh. Bruh. Clenching three was still in the air. Response to Craig Hodges. Craig Hodges was one of the best shooters in the 80s, and he competed in the three-point shooting contest with Larry each time Bird was participating. Mm. Larry won three times, and Craig finished second twice. When Hodges finally took home the title of the best three-point shooter at the All-Star Weekend in 1989, reporters asked him if the main reason for his victory was Bird's injury and non-participation. Craig said, 
Larry knows where he can find me. And Bird replied, I know where. At the end of the Chicago Bulls bench. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Whoa, whoa. Boy, ain't no way, boy. 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 Whoa. Ain't never heard that one. See, this this why we go through and watch all of them, because it's like, but that's tough. That's tough. Gang. Larry Bird was in the prime of his basketball brilliance in the 85-86 season when he led the Celtics to the title. They lost only one game at home throughout the season and the playoffs, setting an stuff. NBA record with 50-1. and one. The Portland Trailblazers were the only team to defeat the Celtics at home in December, so they were a good bet to win in front of their crowd in February. Mm. Before the game, Bird surprised his teammates and journalists by saying that he would shoot all his shots with his left hand, except long jumpers. This was the last game of a long road trip. Larry would always find new motivations and challenges to get through the monotonous grind of the regular season. In the game against Portland, he'd go on to have one of the most memorable games of his career. He hit a shot to send the game to overtime, and then hit a game winner in the OT. Bird finished the game with 47 points, with 14 rebounds and 11 assists. He scored 22 points with his left hand out of sheer boredom and fun, which tells you how insanely good and confident this guy was. White guys guarding him. Oh, we know, we know this one. A lot of people on my Facebook think this story is fake. So, come watch this video then, bro. But back to what I was just finna say. Some people just happy to be in the NBA. Let's just, let's just get this straight, right? This man is in the NBA at his peak, and he just, just making achievements up. Like, this is a game. Like, you know how, like, you know how in a game they give you certain tasks? Keyword, they give you. He's giving himself task. Like, I don't know, man. These he like he like man. These do some bums. Like, I'm finna go out here and just use my left hand. <laughs> Larry is not white. Larry is clear, said Bill Murray in Space Jam, <laughs> while explaining Bird's ethnicity to Michael no, Jordan. Chill, Larry chill, Bird chill, 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 We gotta relax. We running that back, but we got. <laughs> no, he is clear. He he he's neither or. He's the other. Like when you pick the gender, like the the race. He's he's other. Larry is clear, said Bill Murray in Space Jam, while explaining Bird's ethnicity to Michael Jordan. Larry Bird had skills for days. He was thinking the game three moves in advance, but his jump shot was money. He was nimble at six foot nine, but he wasn't by any means an athletic player. Bird suffered from WMCJ syndrome, which stands huh? for white men can't jump, and he was aware of it. On one occasion, he called basketball. B I ain't never. Am I young? I've never heard that in my life. So now the people that watched my my ultimate mixtape reaction just know that was all entertainment, bro. We in 2021, I understand, but that was all entertainment, bro. You know what I'm saying? And he was aware of it. On one occasion, he called basketball a black man's game due to the natural ability and athleticism of African American players. Because of that, he hated when the opposing teams would defend him with another white guy. Bird said that it was disrespectful to his greatness because he was dropping 30 and 40 on the most athletic players in the league. So if you put an unathletic white guy on him, that's barbecue chicken right there. In the trainer's lap. The highest scoring game in Larry, Larry Bird's Bird career so came in the 1986 season in a game against Dominique Wilkins in the Atlanta Hawks. At the beginning of the first quarter, it was obvious that Larry is in the zone. He'd hit everything he threw to the basket, with the announcers repeatedly saying they were watching the greatest shooting exhibition in basketball history. Bird scored 60 on 61% shooting and 15 of 16 on free throws, hitting ridiculous shots over several players. During the game, he suddenly said, in the trainer's lap to Hawks players, which meant he would try to make a three from the corner near the opposing bench. He got the ball, made the shot. I didn't know he said that. And I'm sorry if I missed it in the other videos. You know, we even we even watched the 60 point game on this channel. I didn't know he said in the trainer's lap. Like I know he called the shot though. I know he called the shot, but I didn't know that was the exact words he said. 
Boy, that's, boy, that's tough. God, and one Hawks player who tried to guard him tripped over and fell exactly into the trainer's lap, just like Bird predicted. The Hawks bench was so amazed that they were laughing and high-fiving each other, totally perplexed by Bird's brilliance. After that, they were fined by their coach Mike Fratello for cheering on the opposing player, tormenting Dennis Rodman. Tough. Dennis Rodman was one of the best defenders in NBA history, with quick feet, long arms, and a motor that never shut down. He, knew he was a role. pest, an annoying pest, who never stopped guarding, provoking, and getting into everybody's face. Mm. He used to be a nightmare for scorers around the NBA. However, when he was just starting out, he needed to get some schooling from Bird. After Larry scored four consecutive shots over Rodman, mm. he opened his mean mouth and started destroying Rodman. Bird started yelling at Rodman's coach, Chuck Daly. Who's guarding me, Chuck? Is anyone guarding me? You better get someone on me or I'm gonna go for 60. Even though Rodman was almost super glued to him in an effort to deny him the ball, Bird was at his sarcastic best. <laughs> I'm open. Hurry up before they notice nobody is guarding me. Merry Jesus Epping Christmas. Christ. 1990. Larry Bird loved to play against the Indiana Pacers. Yes, I never heard he was that always before. greeted as a king. It was where the hick from French Lick grew up, made his first basketball steps, and took Indiana State University to the 1979 NCAA Finals. Mm -hmm. And the game Boston played against the Pacers played on December 26, 1990, will forever be etched in memory of the Pacers shooting guard, Chuck Rifleman Person. Before the game, Person said to the reporters, Rifleman is in the building. I'm going bird hunting today. At the oh, tip off, yeah, Bird this. replied to Person that he has a Christmas present waiting for him. While Chuck sat on a bench during the game, Bird received the ball in the corner and shot a three pointer. As the ball was flying towards the basket, Bird turned to Person and said, Merry F and Christmas. The ball, of course, came in without touching the <laughs> Bro, that is what I'm saying. Like, we need more players like Larry. I know it's no, I know it's no, it's never gonna be another Larry Bird. Just, but we need some, bro. We need this type of fire in these players, bro. This is a rare breed. I mean, I guess it was a rare case. You know what I'm saying? Even with just Larry Bird, but bro, that's crazy. I wish somebody would. Rem torching the Suns bench. The best teams in the NBA often coast through the regular season and can lose their edge and focus when playing against mediocre opponents. In one game against the Phoenix Suns, the Celtics lost a double-digit lead and were trailing by two in the final seconds. The Celtics had the possession, and they could tie the game and go to overtime or win it with a three. Larry knew his Celtics shouldn't be losing a game to the Suns, right. and he wanted to play no overtime. So he went to the Suns bench and told all the players and coaches what was about to happen. Yeah. I'm going to bust a three on you guys and just go home. I'm tired of this. Unsurprisingly, he lived up to his word. As the ball was still in the air, he turned towards the Phoenix bench and yelled, told you so, as the ball was going through the net. Calling his shot against Xavier McDaniel. I mean, that's how I beat though. I ain't on no NBA level, but that's how I is. That's how I am when I'm playing 2K. Like, bro, I be down 20 to two, and be like, Chance, it's 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 time to get these boys out of here, bro, because we shouldn't be losing. Daniel, that's Xavier tough. McDaniel was one of the most mm. notorious NBA players in the '80s, and on the courts, he liked to get mm. physical, like Olivia Newton-John. When he was playing for the Sonics and the Knicks, nobody was really messing with X Man. However, Bird was not afraid of a scuffle, and there are multiple stories of Larry participating in bar fights during his NBA career. Mm. In a crowded Supersonics arena, Boston and Seattle played a close game tied just 10 seconds before the end. At that point, Celtics coach Casey Jones called a timeout. I think I Bird this. confidently told him to just give him the ball and that the others moved the hell out of the way. Tough. On his way back to the floor, Larry said, that's exactly where I'll get the ball and I'll score the game winner in your face. All well, X-Man replied, I know you will get it there. I'm waiting for you. Bird received the ball right where he said he would. Tough. He made a tough fadeaway shot. After Bird realized there were still two seconds left, he told McDaniel, damn, I didn't want to leave two seconds on the clock. While well, X-Man walked back to the Sonics bench in disbelief, tormenting a young Clyde Drexler. Before Clyde Drexler came into the NBA, Dang. he was one of the best players in college basketball forming the famous Phi Slamma Jamma with Hakeem Olajuwon at the University of Houston. Drexler was selected by the Blazers with the 14th pick in the 1983 NBA draft. Mm. Even as a rookie, he was already one of the most athletic guys Tough. at his position. 
However, Bird wasn't impressed. When Drexler subbed in the game against the Celtics, he started guarding Bird. Larry smiled at him and mockingly said, You can't stop me. You're a rookie. You don't know anything. He would proceed to hit jump shot after jump shot over Drexler That's before the Blazers bro. coach had mercy on him and subbed him out. While Bird was la Oh my god. <laughs> That is that's bold. That's bold. Hip, hip, George, Drexler just Drexler just been getting torched by everybody, bro. He thought he could guard Jordan. He thought he could guard Bird. No, don't. It's a wrap. That's over with. <sighs> Laughing at Clyde on the way to the bench. Hey, shout out to Nonstop Sports, bro. That, bro. You might have to watch that video next. How good was Larry Bird actually? Not next, next, but next. You get what I'm saying. But if you made it this far in this video, man, I appreciate you. And again, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. We had like a thousand seventeen from what I seen on my phone. Now, all of y'all, bro. I love each and every one of y'all, bro. This is, it's crazy. And I gained another twenty. And I wasn't even like being active. Like I was playing basketball. I ain't gonna lie, busting all it. You know what I'm saying? Somebody wanted to take me out the game. You know me. You know the greatness rubbed off on me. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. But that'll do it for this video, y'all. I appreciate you again. Leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, and I'm out of here. It's AB3, and I'm out.